Hi guys, welcome. Thanks for joining me. This video is my best in beauty for the month of March. So some of my favorite products over the course of the past month. And I've got some really awesome makeup related things. I guess one thing, first thing I'll mention is a little bit more of a skincare item and it's from Benefit. It's called this Specialist Dream Screen SPF 45 and it's oil free. And I have really been loving this and it's kind of been acting as a primer for me really because it's a very, very thin lightweight sunscreen for the face. You shake it up. You can hear that little mixer ball in there. And you squeeze it out and you can see it's very, very liquidy. And I love how kind of silky it feels on the skin. It's very lightweight. Um, it doesn't leave my skin feeling super like tacky or dewy. My foundation seems to really glide on across it. That's why it's just that nice kind of in-betweener step after I apply a moisturizer, which may or may not have sunscreen in it. And then I know I've got my sunscreen with this. And I just love love that feeling once you give it a second to kind of dry down, even though it doesn't come away feeling totally dry. It's just this silky, soft feeling. It doesn't take a lot. It just, you'll find it kind of glides across the skin. You know how some products just slip across easier? This is one of those. And it says invisible silky matte SPF 45 sunscreen for face. So it has been that nice little primer type step under foundation and making sure I've got the sunscreen. So that's an awesome find. Speaking of foundation, shame moisture. Oh my goodness, I have been loving this foundation so much. It's the Weightless Shea Serum Foundation. It says natural finish. I've got it in the shade Nude. It does have the little pump style dispenser here. And I got mine on Ulta's website. And then more recently, I did see a full Shea Moisture display in my Ulta store. So that was exciting. But I'm loving this foundation for how lightweight it is, but yet really good coverage. It does give my skin a little bit of a glow. It's not actual like flecks of shimmer that I can see in this product, but it's just like a soft, softly luminous finish to the skin. I think it's gorgeous and I love that extra kind of drink of moisture that I feel like my skin's getting. I'm not super dry but something about the texture of it just makes it look so natural on the skin as opposed to something that's really like dry and flat and matte looking. But you know if a product's going to be that way for me it has to have the coverage. Like coverage has got to be there for me and I love that this has that as well. But still it manages to be so thin, so lightweight. So it kind of of reminds me of that Tarte um, Rainforest of the Sea that I tried the sample of a few times. Similar consistency and texture. I just, I do feel like this has a little more moisture to it. I don't even need to use a full pump with this. It's an example of another one of those things that just really spreads, glides across the skin easily. You don't feel like you're constantly going back for more and more product. And with a really liquidy foundation like this, um, I'll really like those dense type blending foundation brushes like a a Sigma F80 or um, what's this one? Whoop. This one that likes to fly out of my hand, the F84 is good for that. I really like kind of a dabbing it in type of approach. But I'm wearing this today. Love the way my skin looks with this. Again, I am the shade Nude. Cream contouring is something I have been doing lately. Usually if I'm doing the baking method for whatever reason, I think it's just the compacts I have that also contain a contour type shade along with a coverage product like that mascara product. Talked about this compact last month and my favorites. I've hit pan now on my white peach shade, which is great for added coverage and just really getting that smooth effect on the under eye. But I'll also use this cream bronzer quite a bit too because it's there and it's a really nice tone. But my favorite brush for anything like that, pretty much regardless of what compact it's coming from, I love this Real Techniques sculpting brush. So dense, a little bit angled, definitely tapered down the sides. So, you know, if you hold your brush or you place it on your skin a little bit, you know, this way or that way, you're still laying down nice tapered bristles and able to get a really easy blend. And I just love the size of it. I feel like it stamps the product down exactly where it should be. Not too big, not too small. And I am just really not a fan of like the super blunt cut contour type brushes like this one from e.l.f. I just, I don't get it. I don't see what they're really doing. They just require even more blending because you've gotten such a concentrated swipe of color. And here I just take this, I'll dab it right into the product, 
put it on here, it's already looking soft before I've even made much effort to blend it out. And I just, you know, Real Techniques quality is great. Super dense, incredibly soft. No complaints about this brush, and this could even be good for applying foundation too, just the size of it. I do think it's large enough to do a nice even buff in of foundation. So many face type products this week that I'm loving. Another one here is from e.l.f. It's so shiny. It's the Total Face Palette, and I love what's in here. At first when I got this, I thought, oh, is it just going to be, you know, super soft and sheer and barely show up on my skin? But I feel like everything in this palette, like you glance at it and you think, oh, that seemed kind of subtle. Everything makes more of an impact actually applied than it even appears in the palette. That's just my opinion. And a lot of things aren't that way. A lot of times you'll look at something and be like, oh, it looks great. And then you swatch it out or you apply it and you're like, oh, let down. But these, I love these products. This will be a nice thing. Like even if I'm just doing a light contour, no cream contour, let's say, or if I want to top off a previously cream contoured area like I did today, really nice and soft. It's a great kind of cool type tone to use in that manner. You've got a couple of gorgeous matte blushes here. I'm wearing the pinky one. I think it's so fresh, so brightening to the skin, and in one palette, I think it's great to have the peach and the pink. I will often bounce between two shades like that, so I like having them both there. And then this thing up here is gorgeous. First off, the texture is like, whoa, super soft, and it's got that little bit of a glow, but see how it's more of a muted color? You glance at it and you think, does that have a grayish cast to it? And it's really, it's not, but it's like you've just turned the lights down a little bit on those brighter champagne highlighter type shades. It kind of reminds me of the effect I'll get from the Hourglass Dim Light Powder, but this has a little more sheen to it. So I love just lightly taking it all over my face after I've done my makeup, and I feel like it gives a nice little glow. And I think there's, there's so much happening behind my head with this horribly messy bun. Should I even bother fixing it at this point? We'll just leave it be. I made an attempt to just casually like pile my hair on top of my head and it didn't quite work. But no, this palette, beautiful. I think the skin tones that would benefit from it most would probably be fair, light, light to medium skin. But if you are a deeper skin tone, e.l.f. has now um, in the same kind of format, but they're the black compacts, some really vibrant, like darker blush palettes in both cream and powder. So definitely look into that if you want some blushes that will really stand out on your skin. Skin, but this is more like the subtle natural take and I like how it's got the bronzer, the two blushes, and kind of a glowy shade. And I mentioned using that glow kind of all over the face, but I still like to really pinpoint areas for a certain something here on the cheeks. And the powder I've been using in that way is this Laura Geller Filter Finish Setting Powder in Universal. So it's got all these sort of color correcting looking shades and I don't know that this is actually like correcting much of anything. It just comes together to look like a really brightened face powder. And it's funny because in that perfect palette video I did, one of the questions was about what shade in a palette would you like to have singularly? And one of the things I mentioned was this kind of light, really bright lilac highlight from the NYX Strobe of Genius palette. And this kind of gives me that effect because it's like over the top brightness. It's not too shimmery, but it's so incredibly brightening. Does that make sense? Just the tone that this powder takes on, I feel like is so nice and brightening. So I like to use it with a smallish brush. I'll just dab across all the color, tap off the excess, and it's the kind of thing that I think is designed to be used all over the face. So you could probably do that, but I think it does a beautiful job when you apply it really concentrated. Smaller brush, right on top of the cheekbones. I already had this product on my face. I don't really need any more, but I just, I love that glow. And you can kind of change the color tone that you get a little bit if you go into more of the lilac shade. See, there's that crazy, like, next level bright. It goes beyond the champagne and the soft golden highlights and takes you to something even cooler and thus brighter, in my opinion. Or you can stay over here more toward the peachy and golden type shades and you get a little different tone. 
tone. Sorry, what am I doing with my fingers here? Golden, see, more cool tones. There's no sparkle in this. It's just that beautiful, healthy sheen. The brush, by the way, when I referenced a smaller brush, this is my Up and Up highlight brush. It comes from a little complexion brush set of Up and Up brushes from Target, and it's just a really nice size. Um, super random thing that I know I mentioned in my e.l.f. $1 favorites video, but these tweezers, good lord, these are great tweezers. They have replaced my tweezermans. I use them every morning to pluck out or tweeze out some stray hairs. They are so, so nice. Like, really nice quality. $1. The way the little tips come together is absolutely perfect and precise, and you can get right in there to hairs that you think you have nothing to grab onto and boom it takes it so I love those I've been bouncing around to a lot of different eye products as usual um, last week I had my easy eye week so if you're interested in some certain eyeshadow products that I really like check out those videos but in this video I wanted to mention a couple of cream products that are really great for a quick look as well I know a lot of those videos mention quick techniques but these are the batter up long wear eyeshadow sticks from the balm and they've got some beautiful like neutral shades in this collection Collection, all the way from deeper ones to mid-tones and a couple of the ones that have really captured my attention are these lighter ones. I feel like they're just so brightening if you're wanting, you know, lighter springtime type eye looks. This one is called Moonshot. I think it's the lightest one in the collection and I'm wearing it kind of around my inner corner up onto the lid just a little bit. These go on really, really smoothly. They do set like many of the great long wear shadow sticks out there and I love the little bit of pink hue that this has because I think it's extra brightening when it has that. And then this other one that I love is called Shut Out. And it's kind of unique because instead of being like a crazy loud like brassy metallic gold. It's like a really soft, neutral, barely there gold. I don't know quite how to describe it. I've got it all over my lid and in my crease today it's actually just um this contour shade. I just used that as my crease color and chose to pop these on the lid. These could definitely be bases for different shadows that you love, different powder eyeshadows, but I think for a quick look, you know, popping them on the lid, really getting that bright glow, these are fun. I mentioned the Shea Moisture Foundation earlier. Another thing that I'm loving from this line, yes, I'm going to do a full Shea Moisture video coming up, but this Shea Butter Luscious Lipstick, Oh my goodness, feels so nice, such vibrancy with the color line, and I'm wearing Red Rose today. Really pretty packaging too, by the way. It's got this kind of like, it's a teeny bit rubbery feeling on the outside there, and then I love this kind of chocolate metal, and I think this is such a pretty wearable red. I think what sets this particular line apart is just how moisturizing and wonderful they feel, but yet they don't bleed outside my lips. So it's a comfortable, easy to wear, beautiful red lipstick. Not so bright that you feel like you've slapped on like the brightest retro red ever, but not so dark that you feel like is this kind of a fall lipstick. It's still very, you know, spring and summer appropriate. And I love when I come across what I feel is an every woman's lipstick, you know, the shade that I think everybody needs in their collection because it really looks good on everyone. And it's this Revlon Super Lustrous in Rose Velvet. I've worn this more than a couple times on Snapchat recently. It it's such a pretty, soft, dusty rose shade, you know, just enough pink happening there, just enough neutral, not too light, not too dark. It's the kind of lipstick that you put it on and your face looks finished, but it doesn't really take the spotlight. Like here with today's look, I feel like the red lips are like, look at me, look at me, and I have no problem with that. But sometimes maybe you're just wanting a more soft look overall, and you just want to look nice without anybody really being able to point to one thing and say, oh, it's the lipstick, or oh, it's the eyes. This is such a nice finishing touch to the look. But that's it everyone. Those are my top products over the course of the past month. Let me know what your favorites are in the comments section below and I am excited to bring you more fun videos this week. After a week last week of no reviews, I've got a lot of new info to share with you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.